this been a phenomenal meeting? So thick with the presence of God. Whether hands were laid on you or not, there's been an impartation even from the atmosphere. But check this out, the Holy Ghost isn't done. There's tonight. So you might as well just jump in. Hallelujah. Take both hands and just worship Jesus for a second. Jesus, we worship you tonight. We're so thankful. And we say to God be the glory for all the things that you have done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for bringing us into this house, into this place, into this flow, into this grace that you connected us one to another and to your plan. We're so thankful. Everybody, let's just sing this together. To God be the glory.
shout a little bit more. Hey, <laughs> give me a flat. God is great and greatly to be praised. Come on. Glory, glory. watching by live stream for joining with us and those that are in here we ask you to please silence your phones and electronic devices 
Uh, we want to encourage you to submit any testimonies that have come in this week or other weeks uh, that we've been together, uh, other conferences or crusades. You can use this QR code or you can go to our website um, and our social media and submit testimonies to us uh, any way you would like. We also have testimony cards out in the foyer. If you'd like to handwrite one, uh, we would invite you to do so. We want to let you know, of course, coming up this year, May 5th through the 9th, we have another Jesus the Healer Miracle Crusade. And then August 25th through the 29th, Ontario, Canada. And then October 6th through the 10th, we are working on another location. Uh, that's gonna be announced uh, shortly in the coming next couple of months. Uh, so be watching our, um, our social media and our website for that location. But if you can, please join us for any of those meetings. We would love to see you there. And then our upcoming conferences, June 3rd through the 7th with Pastor Nancy and Dr. Bill Winston is our camp meeting. And our ladies conference, October 1st through the 3rd. We're not announcing any speakers for that yet. Can I? Okay. We will have Pastor Debbie Simons. And Reverend Pat Harrison will be here. So that is our ladies meeting, October 1st through the 3rd. I know you will. I was just about to say that. All the men are invited to. <laughs> so when you come, if you're watching and you're like, I'm not quite sure, roll tape back a couple of years, the last few years, ladies conference. It's, it's a little hard to distinguish what it really is, but it is a ladies' meeting, but all the men are invited. It's just, it, it's just, um, it, it's just a name, just a name, no. Um, but ladies' meeting, again, everyone is invited. We do even have childcare for that, so we, we would invite you, please come to our ladies' meeting. If you're hungry for the word, it doesn't matter if you're a, a husband or a wife, male or female, you can be here. Um, and then we are gonna also have more worship training sessions with Brother David at, Brother David at these conferences. Uh, and then our conferences here, we also do prayer school as well. So if you enjoyed prayer school with the Ramoses, uh, that's gonna be made available um, to you. You can attend and pr uh, worship training sessions as well. And then tonight, we wanted to spotlight something um, to you that if you're newer to the ministry or you've just kind of been... Um, attending or watching our meetings, we have what's called our Legacy Partner Club. Uh, the reason, it used to be called Eagle Partner Club. That's what my father-in-law had named our partnership program. But when he went home, uh, the Holy Ghost gave Pastor Nancy the name Legacy Partner Club. The ministry is currently almost 60 years old. Uh, there's quite, a, you could say, quite a legacy that we are continuing to carry on. Of course, healing uh, is part of that legacy and uh, preaching the word, flowing with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and also with that, there's many arms of the ministry. The Bible school is a significant part of that legacy. Uh, there is the products, the materials that we have that we produce, quite a bit of material. Uh, that's part of that legacy. And also our ministerial organization is part of that legacy. Uh, that is our, our FOF ministerial organization called Fresh Oil Fellowship. And that is a, a branch uh, that comes under Dufresne Ministries Legacy Partner Club. So I'm spotlighting two things here, but they are definitely connected. Um, going back, if I can, to the partnership, one of the biggest things with our partnership is that when you sow to Dufresne Ministries, your finances, your money, your seed, number one, our faith is in a, uh, connected to that as your, we would expect your faith to be connected to that. Um, but it's going to go to so, it, it has the ability to go to so many different things. It could be used to produce material and that book get into somebody's hand that's at home, depressed on their couch, sick in a hospital room. Um, the, the message that goes out through Jesus the Healer broadcast, again, around the world, your partnership giving could be sent to a nation that you don't even know how to pronounce the name. Um, your partnership could be given, uh, as you sow your seed, that could be going even um, 
to the Miracle Crusades. You say, I, I couldn't make it, but because of your partnership, it costs a lot of money up front for us to be able to go take the staff and put these Miracle Crusades on, getting Pastor Nancy there, getting the materials there, getting the equipment there. Your finances and your giving help facilitate the ease of that message, being able to go into that region, that city, that location. Uh, and we're endeavoring to reach regions, not not a church, but a region. We're just, the church is just housing these, these uh, meetings. Um, and so like the one in Fresno, that expense, we were in a, an actual facility, it was not a church. And the expense for that was quite more, uh, quite significant compared to the other ones. Your giving, your partnership uh, sends her to these locations. And I can tell you this, just that miracle crusade in Fresno, we had instantaneous, dramatic miracles every night. Um, people, everyone, I, I, had, I had talked to Pastor Nancy and everyone in that line, there was not one, because we had area churches up there that helped us, they came alongside us, uh, but those people that came in that ministry line to have hands laid on them, none of them were from our, our, hardly any of them were from our churches, our FOF churches, we were reaching those that are desperate to be reached. This is what your partnership does. We cannot, without partnership, the going is much more difficult. It, it's made so much easier for Pastor Nancy with partnership, the sending of the word. Uh, so I would invite you, if you are blessed by this ministry, if this ministry feeds you, uh, if it's a supply to your life in any way, please consider partnering with us because there's somebody else out there just like you and we're finding all the time, I just heard about your ministry. I just found you. In fact, one of the miracles on Jesus the Healer broadcast was a woman who came to our meeting in Fresno, or a, a family that came to the meeting in Fresno. They had just heard Jesus the Healer broadcast one week earlier in the middle of the night on television packed everything up, brought their sick loved one to the meeting, was not supposed to be away from the hospital. They had what's called Addison's disease. They were uh, instantly healed. They got up that next day, all symptoms, all problems gone, got up, ran, everything was gone. That was because of partnership. When Pastor Nancy says yes, there needs to be somebody that also said yes to monthly sowing that seed so that word can go out. So I would just invite you, if you are a partner, can you raise your hand so we can see you and thank you. Thank you partners. Thank you so much because already uh, we are seeing just dramatic uh, things happen in the ministry, but also for those that are, are being affected and reached and ministered to by this ministry. But if you are interested, again, you're not signing up, ushers are in the aisle. They just have information forms that, we just wanna get information to you. If you wanna raise your hand and say, I am interested, there's no requirement. There's no maximum, right back here, right over here, there's no, um, there's no minimum requirement. Uh, there's no, you don't have to give $100 every month. It's whatever the Holy Ghost moves on you and, and whatever you can do, whatever you want to do to be part of this legacy. Uh, we're not quitting, we're not slowing down. We're in fact, we're picking up faster and faster. So uh, your, your finances don't just sit. Uh, they are going, coming into the ministry. We pray and over our partners, we agree with the things that you're believing for. Uh, we pray those Ephesians prayers over them, uh, the the Colossians prayers, and then that money is, is put to work, put to use for the kingdom. So uh, we, we thank you, those of you who took a brochure that's just got that information and thank you partners we are grateful for you and we uh, are in full agreement that what you desire for your life it will come to pass as you're helping bring to pass the vision for this ministry amen um, I was told this is a, a bundle what a super bundle healing deluxe bundle so you if you came tonight and you wanted items on healing there is a healing deluxe bundle out there. Those are all the books, Healer Divine, 
daily healing bread. The healer divine is a, a G, Pastor Nancy took each of the miracles that Jesus was written on Jesus' ministry, and she teaches about those miracles. Daily healing bread from God's table. It's a 60 day devotional book on healing. You have healing, conf, uh, confessions of healing. She is so wonderful at the, the, plan God gave her. It was so wonderful that she obeyed God because we've gotten testimonies from the confessions of healing. She wanted confessions that she could quote the word and would be slow enough for us to quote with her, repeat with her. That it's not just her giving scripture, but we are saying those along with her. Amen. Uh, and how many of you know what my father-in-law used to say? You write it on your heart. What you say, you write on your heart. And when you're faced with symptoms in your body and the mind is bombarded, you need your heart to be strong and sure that your body is healed even when symptoms say it's not. You gotta get it written on your heart. So those confessions of healing help with that. And then Jesus longs to heal a teaching, an audio teaching series, and then how to keep your healing. One of the most important CDs that we have out there because what you receive from God, the enemy would love to take from you, uh, but we won't let him, amen? This book also, Pastor talked about this the first night. This is Dr. Lillian B. Yeoman's Healing School, Classic Teachings and Works, unpublished since the 1930s. This book has her published works, the ones that have been produced over the years, but it has works that have not been published. And those that had been published, I think they, you said they edited those, they enlarged them. This has a lot of material that has not been in print and not been available and not accessible uh, to those that maybe you are a, somebody likes to get online like like Dean and look up old books and find old materials. These have not been in print. They've not been out there. So this book has been made available to us. And you wrote, um, didn't you write the um, a recommendation in this? So if for any reason, get it because her name is in the book. Amen. How about that? No, this will bless you. It's rich. Uh, I got to read much of the manuscript before it got printed. It is very, very good. You will want this book. I think it's time for our double up. I'm sure because we knew Thursday was going to be double up that we're prepared for it. But do you know you shouldn't give without releasing your faith? Amen. So uh, let me just take you to a couple of areas of scripture here so that you can release your faith. Because, you know, the double up helps to frame ministries do what it needs to do to get the word out for people to receive uh, what God wants them to receive the um, salvation healing you know restoration in their family it, it, it's just a, a, an amazing uh, work that God has here and we get to be a supply with the double up offering and, and just referring back to um, when I took up the offering what was it Tuesday um, in second Kings I just want to go back over this one verse because this woman, the Shunammite woman, was not a woman in need. Her harvest was not a need. It was a want. And when the, when the prophet was in his chamber that her and her husband had built, they, they are the ones that funded it. They gave the resources for it. It's money that they sowed into his life. And while he's enjoying it, the anointing begins to stir him to find out how the, he can be a blessing back to her. And when he asked his servant, what can be done for her? And the servant asked her, she said, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I'm perfectly content. So we see here, it wasn't a need. In verse 13, it said, and he said unto him, to the servant, say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? He's saying, you name, you name it. It's a want. Pastor Craig Fields went to First Kings where this widow woman is in dire need. Her and her son are about to eat their last meal and die. But to rescue them, God brought a man of God that had a need. And 
her supply to him was the supply for her need. And in, and let me just take you there real quickly. In 1 Kings 17, in verse, um, let me start with 14. For the Lord God of Israel says that there will always be plenty of flour and oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. Now, you know, he said, make me a cake first. And this is what he told her was going to happen when she became a supply to him. Make me a cake first. He tells her, it's not going to run out. The God of Israel says that there will always be plenty of flour and oil left in the containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. But first, verse 15 in the Living Translation says, so she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her son continued to eat from, I love this, her supply. It says they continued to eat from her supply of flour and oil as long as it was needed. So as she was a supply, she was supplied. In the act of supplying, she was supplied. Whether it's a want or a need. When you become a supply, then you become supplied. God supplied her so she could continue to be a supply to the prophet. The, the, the woman in 2 Kings, she just was a supply without a need, but she got to have a want. So when you sow your seed, whether it's a need you need or a want you want, release your faith when you release your seed. Because as you are a supply, you are being supplied. And if we ever really get that, if the body of Christ gets that, let me tell you something, no ministry, no work of God would ever have a need. When people understand, as I am a supply, I am being supplied, amen? Are you ready to give? Father, we thank you that as we sow tonight our seed, <laughs> And we are being a supply to Dufresne Ministries. We're thankful, Father, that the word says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men shall give unto our bosoms. For with the same measure that we made out, it'll be measured back to us. So, Father, as we are being a supply, we are being supplied. Whether it's a want or a need. And we glorify you for that, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let me tell you how to give. Okay, do we have that up there? The Double Up offering, you can text to give. Text DU and to the number on the screen. You can give online, obviously, or you already have your envelopes.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to have you be seated just for a second here. Play Tony for me. Grant, step in the middle here for a second. We're going to go back into worship here in just a second, but Pastor Nancy sent me a song about two or three weeks ago. I had never, and I don't remember, maybe longer than that. You ever hear a song and from the first line, you go, that came from heaven. Just the lyric, everything about it was written by, a, I think, a United Pentecostal preacher and his wife. And Brother Joel, I know you'll, you'll understand this. When you, there's some songs that come from heaven, you can't even meter it. You can't, like, create uh, measures and beats to it. It just sounds like a flow up and down of water and just all kind of movement. And when you sent it to me, I, was, I, I must have listened to it, I don't know, 20 or 30 times the same day. It was a hook in my heart. 
And so a um, little bit unusual to like just shift and have you sit down. But, you know, there's times when it's right for us to stand and lift our hands and times for all of us to lift our voice and corporately sing together. Brother Copeland said to me one time, he said, David, there's times when the people will receive a greater impartation if you'll just have them sit down. And if somebody's ministering from a, a place in God, they don't even have to open their mouth. The song and the sound and the words will make an impartation of his presence. Sometimes it's hard to put out and receive at the same time. So uh, I just felt like we were supposed to do this tonight. And, uh, you know, um, and then maybe if I'm just following you, Pastor, if we go back into worship or whatever. But praise the Lord. Stepped a pure and holy God And in awesome solitude He stood alone Not one faint star To give Him life Just an endless holy Black is night, but somehow through all the darkness we could see. He saw mountains high and lofty. He saw valleys lush. Saw babbling brooks, wildflowers grow, even heard a robin sing, but he felt a strange compassion, as close to love as pain could be, standing out there. Oh. 
years ago, I, um, Ed had told me, he said, I, I would like for you to start a choir here in the church. And um, the only choir I knew was the one I grew up with. And that wasn't precious people, but <laughs> they loved the Lord. And um, I, um, <laughs> I heard my husband's request. <laughs> but I didn't move on it because I didn't know how to do it. I'd only seen it done in a traditional way. And one night, uh, not long after he requested that, he said, um, I went to bed one night and had a dream. Uh, in the dream, a choir was standing on the front steps and I could literally see rolls of the glory of God coming off the choir. You know, God really loves unity. And I knew he was saying, it's possible to do it, that it's not just a traditional thing, but it's a glory field flow. And um, after I saw, is in the same dream, I looked to the side and there was a grand piano off to the side and on the stand where the, the music holder, the music stand for that piano sat a spy, uh, uh, a, like a three ring binder, but one of those thick ones, like you would see the, uh, um, like a legal documents. The one, not, not this, but this. And in the dream, I said, God, what is that notebook? And he said, songs for the era. And he said, you don't have to write them. Jesus is the author. All you have to do is get in the spirit and hear what's already been authored. That doesn't mean that because they've been authored, they'll automatically come. It means we have to hear. And I, you, would, you could tell somebody heard that song because it like he said, it comes from a different place. Yeah. It lands in a different place and it does a, a further reaching work. Yes. Amen. Stand with me to your feet. Father, we thank you. Would you do me the favor, Grant, of just doing the, chor the chorus part? You know where that starts? He saw me in his life. wonderful thing of it, he did. He did. He did. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for your faith. By faith you saw, by faith you created, by faith you planned. 
And Jesus, you came and made it possible. The exact same faith is in us. We thank you. And that faith is in us so that we can move with him. So we thank you for that. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Just lift up your hands. Let's worship you. Let's do it again and let the congregation sing with that chorus. How about that? He saw me in his likeness. Ephesians 1 16 is recorded what Paul prayed I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him and we could say this the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who you are in him. Amen. Right? Yes. The eyes of your understanding or the eyes of your spirit being enlightened. What's that mean? This has got to dawn on your spirit. You can't just read it as something on a page and spend it. It has to become revelation for it to become yours. The eyes of your understanding or spirit being enlightened. 
that you may know, number one, what is the hope of his calling. What's that mean? We could say it this way, that you may know who you are in him. Because we're in him, we're called in him. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. Number two, that you may know what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What's that mean? Everything you need is in the glory. Everything, everything, everything. That you may know what belongs to you because you belong to him and the glory flow is your flow. And number three, that you may know what is exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. The exceeding greatness, what's that mean? It exceeds every other power. And it just doesn't barely exceed, exceed it. It greatly exceeds it. So calling the power that is ours because we're in Christ. What's that mean? We can do some things. We are authorized, empowered to do some things. And we need revelation of that. So basically, Paul was praying that you would see who you are in Christ, what you have because you're in Christ, and what you can do because you're in Christ with that power. When it says the exceeding greatness of his power, for it to be the greatest power, that means every other power is lesser. And we have to look upon every other power that's not God's power as far lesser. And magnify the greater power. Talk of the greater power. Because the power you talk of and give your attention to is the power that will flow for you. If you talk about the power of worry, power of fear, power of the past, those kinds of things that people will give place to. There's a greater power to tap into. Let's not focus and give any place to the lesser power. Amen. But know this, Paul said, this has to dawn on your spirit. Why is that? Because no person's revelation is yours. It has to be revelation to you. Just because it's your pastor's revelation, it's not yours. Dad Hagen made a statement at one time and he said, I went down to death's door before I got the revelations I have. But he said, my revelations aren't yours. All I can do is tell you what's been revealed to me, but I can't reveal it to you. Only the Spirit can reveal to you. Amen. What's that mean? He, he takes it and makes it a living thing in you. And Paul said, pray that faith does not come by prayer. But revelation can come by prayer. And revelation carries faith with it. Because when it's revealed, the faith is there. So we don't pray for faith for people, but we pray for revelation because the faith is in the revelation. The revelation is the conductor of the faith of God. And when people struggle in their Christian walk, they walk with God, then they fall back. Then they walk with God and then they fall back. And they walk with God and they fall back. What's the problem? Well, they just need to straighten up. No, lack of revelation. Because revelation changes everything about the way you respond in life. Amen. And so we pray. We pray for people instead of, get in scold, instead of scolding them for not doing better. Amen. So it's important. Because Paul said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give. May give. This is given to you. But we have to, if I could say this, when we show ourselves hungry 
it makes us good receivers of what he has to give. If we're apathetic or casual or indifferent, he doesn't withhold, but we can't receive with that, with that attitude. Our attitude sets our ability to receive some things. Amen. And he longs to give because he knows if they'll just get it, if they'll just, if they'll receive this into their heart, the struggle's over. If they'll be a doer of what they receive, if they'll be a doer of what they receive, the struggle's over. And you don't run and run from counseling meeting to counseling meeting to, I'm not against counseling. I'm just saying, uh, once you know, once you know some things. And it's, you're done going from crisis to crisis, struggle to struggle. When things dawn on your spirit, you say, well, Pastor Nancy, uh, how can I position myself for that? Well, Joshua chapter one, verse eight, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night so that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then you make your way prosperous. Then you have good success. God's not mentioned in that verse and the devil's not mentioned in that verse, but your success is. It, the law of success is laid out in that verse. What's the law of success? Well, you're spoken of five times. The word is referred to three times. So what we do with the word is the law of success. What we do with the word. And when we meditate on it, we are opening up our spirit for the Holy Ghost to reveal what we hadn't seen before. I remember years ago, one night just laying in bed before I'd fallen off to sleep and God said this to me, talk to me about my word. Talk to me about my word. Why? Because so, many, so much of the time, if we're not careful, when we go to God, we're talking our difficulty. We're talking our obstacles. We're talking what's in our way. We're talking the need. And it's not that he doesn't want us to make requests. He invites us to make requests. But we will address the request different when we already know something about the word. Talking to him about the word. There was um, an account of uh, a minister talking to, if I could say this, an older saint that in the earlier part of the 1900s, she was in on Azusa Street and all these, uh, she was just in on some, some earlier workings of that century. And as, an, as a much, much older woman, this one minister asked her, What's the difference between the way the church prays today and the way the church prayed in those younger years when you were part of these prayer groups? She said this, she said, today when Christians go to pray, they're trying to settle down on the word. Meaning they're trying to get uh, talk themselves into believing it. Yeah. She said, before we even went to prayer, we were already settled on the word. Then we came to prayer settled. We weren't there trying to talk ourselves into believing something. We went there believing. Well, we talked to him about his word. Talk to him about his word. This is what he wants to do is he wants to give these revelations to us, but we have to be interested enough to him to talk about his word. And then when someone is not interested enough, we can pray for uh, these Ephesians prayers and the other prayers of the epistles for believers because it will put that in proximity of them to where everywhere they turn, there's a dealing an influence of the word and an influence of those prayers being prayed. It starts influencing them towards God's direction and they start hungering toward God when they weren't maybe hungry before. Um, I remember being about four years old the first time, three to four years old, and it happened more than once. 
at the house that we lived in, there was a, um, a plowed ground around that particular home. And it was a small town we lived in, maybe a couple hundred people. And that ground was my playground. That dirt field was my playground. I mean, we would dig holes, you know, you play baseball, you, you know, climb the trees. You, mother just threw you outside. You weren't allowed to come in all day. You just, she'd throw you out in the morning and then don't, don't come back in. Mom, I'm thirsty, there's a water hose. And it was at those times I would take that water hose and I'd go out to that field and I would make mud pies. And I remember so distinctly a couple of different occasions, I'm out making mud pies in the field and all of a sudden the presence of God would come on me. I didn't know what it was. I knew I recognized something about a nearness of God. And I'd run in the house and I'd go to the bookcase and I'd pull out a Bible. I couldn't read. And I'd run and put that in my lap and just pretend like I turned the pages and go down and pretend like I was reading the Bible. What was that? The influence of God's presence. When we pray for people, people who weren't interested, we can surround them with the influence of His presence and they will want Him. Amen. Well, um, so we'll, we're, we're here tonight. I was just prompted to, let's just spend some time praying. Yeah. Let's just spend some time praying. One of the things that God said to me probably about 20 to 25 years ago, in fact, we were up in Canada. We were at the, the, the church of those friends of ours. And I was in the hotel room and the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, uh, you must labor in prayer to receive the revelations that belong to this era. Notice that. Labor in prayer to receive the revelations. Notice he didn't say, so that I'll give. He's already given. It's just, it's looking for a receiver. We're looking for a receiver. A receiver. And uh, Pastor Debbie, it was your husband that said, uh, maybe you can help me with this as I tell it to make sure I'm getting it right. But he had, I don't know if it was a dream or a vision about the angels going. They were carrying something through the earth. Do you remember this? This He's told me about it a couple of times because it stood out to me. Either a dream or a, or a vision that he had and he saw angels carrying something through the earth. And they would stop with certain people and open up what was in what they were carrying and deposit it to the people. And they would stay with those people and then after a while they'd move on, pick up what they had and go to a different location. And he said, God, what is that? He said, they're looking for places for the oracles of God to be distributed. That as long as the people honor the oracles, they'll stay with them. But if they quit, honoring what God's doing and do something different. And they veer from the oracles of God. The angels were taking those and going somewhere else with them. What's that mean? We want to be someone who hears, yes. perceives, and is willing to move with what God is doing in this era. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just, let's just spend a little bit of time praying. How about that? Hallelujah. You can be seated if you want or whatever is suited to you. But I'm going to ask you this. Stay in step with what the rest of the people in the room are doing. That's, that's going to get us to the best place. Okay? Because we all have maybe different um, personalities of how we may pray. But just be aware. Let's just all move together. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's just raise up our hands and Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We worship you. Just lift up your voice and worship Him. Just lift up your voice. Let's worship Him. Jesus, we worship You. We glorify You. 
we thank you so much for the precious price you paid. You did pay it all. And we receive it all and we move with it all. Everything that's in your heart, everything that's in your heart, we move with it. We thank you. Now, Jesus, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we give you thanks. We honor, we honor you. We magnify you. Master to we worship you. Father, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. Your plan in this time, we invite it into our nation, into our own home states, into our communities. We pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that you raise up those in this nation, in the political scene, who will move with your plan and bless the people. You said, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight, in the sight of God our Savior. God our Savior, not government our Savior, not political party our Savior, not any other outlet our Savior, God our Savior. You are our Savior. And we call upon you for your plan as our Savior to work in this, in the earth, in every nation, in this nation, in our state, in our community. We invite your plan. For you are the Savior, God our Savior, God our Savior, God our Savior. We worship you as our Savior. We worship you as our Savior. You are our Savior. We thank you, Father. We're not confused about that. And we're not disheartened by any other outlet that would try to act as Savior. You're our Savior. Therefore, we are saved and we thank you. And we ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. And you make bright clouds or lightnings and you give us showers of rain. We believe you for it. We believe you for it. We believe you for it. And we pray, Lord of the harvest, that you raise up labors 
to send forth into the harvest. And we thank you that the angels are working to bring, to bring everything needed in this last day harvest of great souls, the miracles, the healing power, the funds, the equipment, the supply, everything that's needed. We thank you. We thank you that it comes. We thank you that it comes. And as you said to me, Father, that we are to labor in prayer to receive the revelations that belong to this era, we lift this up before you. We lift this up. We lift up the voices that you would use in bringing forth those revelations. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Mashta asta aja atabosto osto gogo ante este ete este kikiye. Mashta kakaye. Mashta kakaye. Mashta karya do 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 ko chikikiya na mancha asta aye. Mole menji osto de este de este. As asta 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 asta. Mash do de 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 kikiya da bosto de. Mash tiki ete este kikiya. Ah ah ah, stata, ah stata taie, ah stata taie, ah stata taie, ah stata taie. Masta kaka kaya da bosso de 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 kiki kie. Masta kaka kaya da bosso de 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 kiki kie. Masta kaya da basa kaka kaya. Man oma 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 ma ma na 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 shie. Ostoye is thinking he is stepping over, stepping over, stepping over into that at the higher flow. Masta kaya da bosso de asa many many. I lift up the many to step over. Asta da 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 kaka into that higher flow. Asta oyo namo ototo asa asa da 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 kaya asta kaka kaka ya da basa kaya. Or steps ordered of the Lord. Steps ordered of the Lord. A steps ordered. Steps ordered of the Lord. Ordered of the Lord into the highest flow. Asta asta ayada basa. Asta da 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 da. Oza oza da da da. Ancha asa toto. Oza toto to. Man chiki kiye. Asta asta da 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 da. Koko koye. A a asta, a a asta, a asta ta 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 ye, asta ta ta ka ye, asta ta ta ye, asta ka ka ya da mo oso de ese kiki ye, a ba ba asta ta ta to ko ese te kiki ye, a ba 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 ka sto o shi kiki ye, asta ka ka ya da mo so de 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 kiki kiki ye, asa to 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 ye, a pa cha ka ye. Asta koko ko ya na manda tan 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 da ba asta da tu 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 ostongo ye de be este de asta da asta da asta da asta da macha da ba koko ko ya da ba sa ye ete te and the doors the doors the doors to those nations stay open longer the doors stay open longer asta da 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 not closed yet not closed yet. Not closed yet. Asta da 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 do ko ye. Asta da 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 do ko este kiki ye. Asta da da the mercy of God holding those doors open. Asta the mercy of God holding those doors open. Asta da 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 do she e she e se te. Asta asta da 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 do ko ye. Asta da da do ko chiki ki ya. Ancha to 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 sto o sto to 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 ye. Ah, so to to go to be sticky kiki ye. Ancha to to to. Oh, so to 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 go sti. Ah, sto o ha 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 ha. Oh, we thank you, masada da 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 da. Oh, so the eseki enchi enchi. Oh, sto oh sto ko oh sto ko oh sto ko. Ah, ah, sto ko oh she eseki kiki ya. A ba 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 de 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 kiki ya, a sa to 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 ye, a sa ta 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 ka ye, a cha to 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 ko ye, a sa to 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 ye, a sa ta 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 to ko 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 ya da ba sa ta ka ye, a pa cha ka ta ta to sti kiki ye, a so to to 
ma ba 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 sta ka 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 ye ma sti ji sti ki ki ah za da 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 ko sti ki ki ma sta to to cho ko te te ki si ki ki ma a sta to to cho ko te pe si ki ki ye za to 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 sti ki ki ye ba 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 ka sa ta ta ne e si ki ki ye ma ba 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 ka sti ki ki ye ba 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 ka sta ka ta cho ko te pe si ki ye ma ba 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 ka si ki ki So jo do osto to We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. The word says about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1. It says he was anointed with the oil of gladness above his brethren. And there was a reason because he loved righteousness and he hated iniquity. Um What you develop an offense against, God can't use you to help there. We are clear on what the standard of the word is. We're not confused. Because society does not set our standard. Society changes daily on what their standard is. That's why it's such a blessing to have the standard of the word because we're set. We're set on truth. We're set on truth. So we're not confused. We're not confused. And just because others are doesn't mean we are. But, and I, I want to say this specifically about the government. Um, if you become offended and it becomes, the words become harsh. God will have to go to somebody else to help with that. Um, I'm reminded of one t story that was told about a particular person that was mightily used in prayer. And um, there was someone telling, they, the person that prayed was not telling it, but someone else was telling it about the person that prayed. They were telling it to me and they said that this person had two angels in the room and the angels and the, per the praying person saw the angels and the angels were discussing something and said, do you think it's safe to let them know about this government issue. And the other angel answered back to the other, the, the angel that asked that and said, yes, it's safe because she has never spoken against the government. Oh, there you come on. Yes, yes, there is. Amen. So the heaven could trust her to not, not be colored by opinion, personal opinion and influence, but just God's will be done. God's will, not my will. Am I saying we're mindless? We're not mindless. But I'm saying know the difference and make sure that your words don't cause you to have to be bypassed in, in being employed in certain things. Because if you develop an offense, um, God can't flow through it. Amen. Amen. And don't take your beliefs from a media who builds their business on strife. They plant strife where there was no strife. They imagine strife where there was no strife. They do that. That's, that's how they get paid. That's how they get paid. And I'm not saying all do that, but I'm saying you have to. Don't, don't fall into that low way of defining your thinking. We live by the word. We live by the word. We're not confused. We're not troubled. We're not, we just live by the word. 
Amen. Amen. And that just settles everything for us. Yeah. Yeah. Just settles it for us. Yeah. I don't have to wonder, well, you don't know what's happening. No, no, past is gone, past is gone. Past is gone. Yeah. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. I want God to be able when he needs some, someone to say something yeah. that he can trust our words. Yeah. Amen. 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 And it does matter. It does matter. It does matter. Why? Because bitter and sweet waters can't come out of the same flow. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. 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 I want to... I was just reading some of this today from E.W. Kenyon's book called In His Presence. I'll just read a, a little bit of the excerpts if I could. He writes, some have said that prayer is the greatest opportunity ever afforded to a man that's in Christ. Since this is true, then you can understand why there would be enemies to stand in the way of your prayer life. You can understand why the adversary would make it his business to see that the prayer life of an individual, the prayer life of a church should be ineffective. Satan would not be a good general. He would not be a strategist against the prayer life unless the prayer life should be destroyed. Um, listen, he fights our prayer life more than anything else because he's the one that suffers from it the most. You conduct business with heaven based on what heaven shows and what heaven knows and what heaven reveals. And then Kenyon goes on and says, a church is as powerful as its prayer life. Dad Hagen made a statement in a service once. He said, when a church hits high center, do you know what high center is? I've been on high center before. Uh, daddy would drive his pickup out through his fields to look at his crops. And he would have mounds of dirt. And based on what the weather had done, sometimes he would get, go up and get stuck. And it hits the frame of the pickup. And so the front tires aren't touching and the back tires aren't touching. It's stuck on the frame. It's called high center. And Dad Hagen said, when a church hits high center, what's he saying? It's not moving. It'll, it'll seem to go forward a little bit, then it'll go back. Just teeter-totter. But it won't make progress. It'll just kind of sit in a tottering up and back position. He said, uh, prayer is how you get over that, that point. So E.W. Kenyon says, a church is as powerful as its prayer life. The men and women who learn the secret of reaching the throne, getting the ear of God become dangerous to the hosts of darkness. Martin Luther's prayers gave birth to the Reformation. His knowledge and experience of the new birth would not have given birth to, the, uh, would not have given birth to that mighty upheaval in Germany unless that man had had a prayer life. When John Knox cried, give me Scotland or I die, and when Martin Luther said, I will not let go of you, God, until you give me Germany, God heard him. And God is as easily reached now as he ever was. It is not a problem of education. It's a, pro but a, a problem of knowing your rights and privileges and then daring to enter the throne room facing God with the needs of the world. Every one of us has a place in the prayer life. God has no unused members. There isn't a useless member in the physical body. Neither is there in the spiritual body of Christ. God has planned with divine wisdom, the body of Christ. And the moment that you are born into that body, you have your place in which to function. If anyone thinks that because of lack of training or of lack of this or that, he hasn't a place, he's deluded by the enemy. You have a place. With that place comes responsibility. 
and with responsibility comes a reward or demerit. If you do not take your place in the family of God in the church and begin to function, the body of Christ is weakened because of it. Your business is to find your place and fill it. Until you do, you'll pay a price. I want you to know my brother, my sister, that the price you pay for staying out of the will of God is expensive. You may pay in sickness. You may pay in loss of money. You may pay in unhappiness with your loved ones for you can't be the protected one and the cared for one as long as you're standing outside the Lord's will for you. So take your place. Um, I remember probably about, my goodness, 35 years or so ago, I was having a nagging physical symptom, nothing incapacitating, just something, just a nuisance. And one day the Spirit of God said to me, if you'll take time to pray, that will be healed. So I went aside and I knew he didn't mean pray for my healing. I knew he meant yield to a flow of prayer. Uh, to spend time in prayer. And I went aside and began to pray. And when I did, every symptom left. That recurring nagging was gone. And as a, as a younger Christian, that confused me. Because to me, it, lo it looked like by praying, I earned healing. And I thought, that's, something's wrong about that. Because I don't have to pray long enough to earn healing that's already been provided. And later I realized that God had been dealing with me to spend more time in prayer. And because I had been neglecting it, I was in disobedience. And because I was in disobedience, then the symptoms had a right to stay. I wasn't earning healing. I was stepping into obedience. I was stepping into obedience. And it was the disobedience that had opened the door for the symptoms. Anytime we know to do something and we're not doing it, there's going to be an effect of that. And it will show up in a way that many times you won't even connect the dots. I did not realize that me not spending that time in prayer that he was dealing with me about would show up in my body. But when the devil has access, he doesn't have to ask your permission of how he attacks. He can attack any arena. And this is where many people miss it. Anything that God's dealing with us about, obey, 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 because that's our safety. That's our safety. The will of God, the plan of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, some are having physical issues, financial issues, marital issues, family issues, not due to a lack of faith, but sometimes a lack of fulfilling what God's dealing with them about. Obedience. Obedience opens doors to God's best and obedience closes doors to the enemy. Amen. Prayer is the will of God for every one of God's people. And it's, don't, don't get, don't fall into a thing that some are called to pray. Everyone, no, there's no such thing as people are called to pray like they're called to the fivefold ministry. Every, some are apostles, some are prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, teachers, but God tells all of us pray without ceasing. Why? Because the prayer work calls for everyone, not just some. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. That is right. Not just some. Yes. It calls for us all. Yes. Amen. Yes. And sometimes uh, you're not healed because you pray. You're not prosperous because you pray, but because you obey. Yes. Yes. Obey. Yes. Obey. Yes. Prayers don't earn something from God. Yes. It's an act of obedience to the word. Yes. And it position, obedience positions us for God's best and disobedience positions 
us to be robbed from. So E.W. Kenyon goes on and says this, give yourself to meditation, prayer, and study of the word. Don't allow anything to stand in the way of you finding your place. Life will not mean much to you outside of the will of God. The big thing of life is to be in the will of God. There are only two ways of getting acquainted with God through the word and through prayer. If we don't take the time to pray, we're losing out. We can't say that we have no responsibility in prayer, for we do. To see need is to step up and pray. We can't plead that we have too much work to do because we can pray while we work. We can't put up with the plea that we do not know how for we can learn if we choose to. To disobey prayer is to disobey the call of our Father. The prayer responsibility today is the most important thing of our lives. He writes, did you ever realize that there are men and women who are defeated and breaking down in their businesses, breaking down their homes and spiritual lives because the church hasn't prayed? We have been occupied with our own, our own pleasures and dreams, and men and women are staggering under the burdens that should have been carried and dealt with through God's people. He says, do not let this simply awaken you for a moment, but let prayer become like your eating, your business, or your home. If you're a mother or a wife and you live at home, there are certain duties You can perform every day with your family, but the greatest duty you'll ever perform for your family will be the prayer duty. Prayer should be as natural as breathing and as enjoyable as eating. Oh, we can tag on to that. (laughs) Foodies. We can call ourselves prayees. How people enjoy certain, yeah. So it should be enjoyable. If it's not enjoyable, we're doing it wrong. So just know this, if it seems as a hardship, you're being duped. You're being duped because it is the greatest pleasure to be with him. Amen. Prayer should be as unconscious as our communication with each other. What's this mean? It's not formal and rigid and calculated and legalistic. And now it, 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 it can carry an order and it should. It should have some order to it so that it's completed. It should not be the child only of need but should be based on a spiritual fellowship with the father and with the master so that our needs are his needs and we are not our own, we are part of him. Our body is not our own. The property we control is not our own. Our abilities are not our own. They're for Him. So we are laboring together with Him. And what we've considered personal needs are really His needs. (laughs) I can't tell you the number of times after Ed died. Um... I got a love letter from the IRS and it was so love filled that a regular envelope couldn't hold it. A legal size, it took a a manila envelope. Is that what you call it? And go, you know, you just see the sender and you go, I I am so loved. (laughs) But I dare not open it until I choose. Because I already had six and a half million calling out. (laughs) And this wasn't a ministry thing. This was a personal, you know, thing. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know too much about where things stood. So I just held it up Uh before I opened it up. Can I tell you that? You won't struggle with with it after it's open if you'll know what to do before it's open. Amen. Yes. Come on. Yes. We are in tax season right now, aren't we? (laughs) 
Monday, Monday. I love something Morgan was telling me that Dr. Winston said. He said, Jesus did not touch into his personal resources to pay his taxes. He said, you go over there, you get a fish. Meaning this, I'm not touching what comes. So he said, every year my, hut, my wife and I release our faith for extra, outside of our regular income to meet that need because that's how Jesus showed it to be done. Then you're not offended at paying your taxes because it didn't touch into your personal resources. It didn't rob from your personal resources. It was in addition to your personal resources. Jesus set us a pattern, didn't he? <laughs> I don't know why I got off on taxes. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for... <laughs> you get a brownie button. <laughs> so I, I said, Father, you've got mail. Yeah. <laughs> she is. I can't do this. I don't even know what's in this, yeah. but I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. But you've already supplied for it. Yes. You've already supplied for it. You've got mail. Yes. Right. Not my problem. Not yes. My faith, not my problem. Yes. My faith, not my problem. I bring my faith. I don't pick up a problem. I pick up my faith. I don't pick up the problem. And it was very, very abundant. Big numbers, yeah. big numbers. You know, like what, what are they, uh, what is that game show? Big numbers, big numbers, big numbers. What, is, what game show is it? I don't remember. What is it? Wheel of Fortune, big numbers, big numbers. Well, the wheel was big. <laughs> and whenever I didn't do anything, but just say, I thank you, Father, for taking care of me. And I don't care how you take care of it. I don't, I don't tell God how to take care of it. I don't say, give me money. He's got, he got a lot of ways. He got a lot of ways. He got a lot of ways. And I'm not going to use my limited thinking to box him in. However you do it. However you do it. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I, don't, I just know there's a supply. That's all I know. And um, it was maybe two weeks later, I got a follow-up letter. And this one was in a little envelope, a regular legal size, yeah. not a manila folder. Right. And it had, let me calculate how to say this. I'll just say it. Well, <laughs> it was, it was about 10% of what the original contact had been. About 10%, 10%. They just said, this all you owe. I didn't contact them. I didn't call them. I didn't do anything. I just let supply work. I just, my need was his need. If it's important to you, it's important to him. You don't have to beg him and coerce him to move in something that's important to him. You're important to him. What you face is important to him. You don't have to coerce him into working for what's important to him. Amen. Amen. He goes on and he says this, the work that we are doing is his work so that prayer is not what we have thought it was, but it's fellowship. It's sharing. It's a community interest. What between me and heaven and the body of Christ. We are one in this, just as the vine and the branch are one. The branch cannot bear fruit alone and the vine cannot bear fruit without the branch. So prayer is simply talking it over with God. Well, isn't that what we've been referring to? Getting his views, his will in the matter, his plans, and carrying out those plans with his grace, his ability, and his wisdom. Amen. Amen. Habits are children of our choice. We are what we make ourselves. This prayer habit will be born of your own will. What does this mean? You have to choose. You have to agree. You have to agree. This habit is not, this habit is hard to form 
for most people because they have made it a duty. Just as we do not enjoy those who we visit because it's our duty. We want those who love us to come and visit us because they can't help but be with us. That's way, that's way we're to approach God instead of there's my check off thing for my planner. And he says this, the names that are familiar to us in God's Westminster Abbey of the church are the names of those who pray. Men and women who have climbed the mountains of usefulness in the struggle with circumstances through prayer. Jesus was a man of prayer. He taught prayer not as a slavish duty, but as a glorious privilege. The more that I study the life of Jesus, I'm convinced that he did not exercise divine power in excess of what every intelligent child of God possesses today. The difference is that Jesus knew what belonged to him and Jesus used his rights. We do not know what belongs to us as we ought. Not knowing what is ours, we cannot use what is ours. Amen. God said this to Dad Seymour. Remember the man who spearheaded the Azusa Street Revival. He said, pray more. There are better things to be had in the spiritual life, but they must be sought out with faith and prayer. And then Dr. Summerall wrote this. Prayer is actually the, the council chamber where divine commands are issued, where the believer receives solutions to his problems and receives the divine infilling of divine energy. Every outstanding person of God in history has been a person of prayer. It is not possible to possess great dominion and not return constantly to the master to receive instructions from him in its use. The act of praying generates omnipotence. Continual communion with the commander assures victory. <laughs> Yeah, not just big words, but we got to be around the man of the words and you saw it in his life. Amen. How much is offered us and how much is available to us? Amen. If prayer seems to be a duty, make it more intimate. Just be, talk to him as you would someone that you love being with because the devil wants to paint it as something less and different than it is. Amen. But you get in his presence and it's like, we not coming out. <laughs> not on purpose, right? Hallelujah. Stand with me to your feet tonight. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. One of the things he said to me tonight, he said, I just want you to take time to pray. And we did. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Just lift up your hands. Lift up your voice to him tonight. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Um, Pastor Watts, I don't know. I haven't spoken to you about your building. I don't know what's... I know that you're in a different building. I don't know... Is it, if it's something you're leasing or buying. But when I was sitting over there yesterday, God said, tell him, uh, I, I'm working on his building. His building. Heaven's involved. Amen. Amen. Yes. Has a building for you. Yes. And you know something? Um, I've learned this. That when people don't cooperate with the plan of God, People talk, God talks to you based on his will, not based on what people are going to do. Let me, let me illustrate that. There have been times when I, I have been at home before a service and God said, when you get to the service, minister to such and such. Call them out and minister to such and such. And I get there and they're not there. Did I miss it? No, they missed it. Why did God tell you to do that? Because he spoke to me based on his will, not based on their obedience. And you have to learn this. 
God will talk to you about things and then it won't play out. It's not because God missed it or because you missed it. It's because people disobeyed. God speaks to you based on his will. He does not speak to you based on people's obedience. And I say that to say this, if you had it in your heart about the previous building, that that was yours, that doesn't mean you missed it. People missed it. And I've seen this, that when God restores, when somebody doesn't comply, what God brings the second time around is so much better than the first time around. So much better, so much better, so much better. We see this. I'm just saying it's a better one than you, than you were going after. It's a better one. We see this, God chose and anointed King Saul. But when he veered, the replacement was better. King David, it was said about King David, he was a man after God's own heart. That was never said about King Saul. Why? The second time around was better than the first. So if it seems like something was lost that you should have had, it's better second time around. It's better. It's better. Better second time around. Why? Because when God's movement is always on the increase. God's, God's, movement is, it, God's movement is never. It doesn't get worse with God. It gets better with God. Everything gets better. So the longer, the longer it takes for that house to show up, the better version you're going to get. The better version. Because God's movement is always on the increase. It's always on the increase. So don't let, don't get sorrowful or grieving over a business, a relationship, a home, something that you thought was lost and now it'll never be as good. No, it's better. It's better. The restoration, the restoration is better. The restoration is better. I got laid off from work and people fall apart. Are you kidding? That's because there's a better job, better hours, better pay. And the longer it takes for the better to show up, the better it is. Because it keeps getting better. And, the, and, and go, I've been looking for the, a, a job for two months. Pastor Nancy, I can't find one. Uh, well, just know this, over those two months, a better job, a better. It's just been getting better and better with the passing of time. Amen. Ne never, the devil never gets the last word. The devil never gets the last word. He never gets the last word. In the plan of God, he never gets the last word. So if you've made wrong decisions and the devil has said, now you have to settle for a measure of defeat because you made wrong decisions. No, God, when God restores, what happens over time? What happens over time? It gets better. It gets better. How, now, how, how do we have scripture for that? The path of the righteous grows. So just know this, what you lost gets restored with something better. Every time, every time, every time, every time. So don't cry over what was lost. It just made way for what was better. The devil thought he took, he took 
God's plan. And all he did was vacate the place. Give, give room for better to show up. Amen. Hallelujah. Restored are better steps. They are. Go ahead. Go ahead. Better, better, stronger, stronger is the presence of the Lord. <laughs> it's not going backwards. We're going forward in the presence of the Lord. I keep hearing it's better, better. Oh, my friend, it's getting stronger, stronger. We're going forward in restoration from
know what that is? That's your answer for accusing thoughts. That's your answer for fear thoughts. No, I'm getting better, getting better, getting better, better. How about this? My health better than it ever was before this attack. My strength greater than it ever was before this attack. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to do one other thing before we close tonight. If you came here tonight, this is not per se a healing service, but there are people that because of our Jesus the Healer broadcast, they look for opportunity to come and be ministered to. If you came tonight with the purpose of being ministered to for healing, we don't want to bypass that opportunity for you. So if you say, Pastor Nancy, I need hands laid on me. I've come for that. I'm expecting to receive my healing. Uh, you come up here if you would. Hallelujah. You came tonight specifically for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we say to those coming up, better, better. Stronger, stronger. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Congregation, it matters to us, doesn't it? that they receive. I said it matters to us. So what's that mean? We release our faith with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I ask you, love, what is it that you need? You came from the Bay Area. Well, thank you for coming. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for their hunger. We thank you for the greatness of your plan in their life. And we thank you, Father, that they walk under the clarity, the accuracy, and the fullness of your plan. Be blessed in Jesus' name, blessed with his best, that the future gets brighter and brighter in Jesus' name. And we receive it in Jesus. We receive it in Jesus' name. We receive it in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What about you, love, for somebody else? Okay, Father, we thank you for that healing anointing that it goes into this cloth and this cloth acts as a storage battery. And when this cloth is laid upon their body, it will drive out pain, symptoms, sickness, and disease. And they shall be whole. And if there's a presence of an evil spirit, it will drive it out. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Hi, love. Is it for myself? For you? Okay. Uh -huh. issues okay. Like 15, so oh, really? Yeah. And so I just want your agreement. Yes. Sure. 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 Okay. All you have to do is say, thank you, Father, you're working. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay, don't worry. Cast the care of that. Because he's the one that'll do the work in them and for them, right? And, and we don't really care if it looks like it's progressing or not. Okay? Amen. What about for your mother? Her, she's had um, alopecia ever since uh -huh. she had me and my sister. So all okay. of her hair is gone. All of her hair is gone, yeah. And yeah. she's been believing for Sure. Any Restoration. Yeah. Better. Right? Father, we thank you for that healing anointing. We speak those ears be open in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for those to dry up in Jesus' name from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We thank you for it, Father. And we thank you, Father, for that healing anointing that goes into this cloth. And when it's laid upon her mother, total restoration in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, Father. We hold to your word. We honor your word. We believe your word. And we believe in the power of God that's working from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. What about you, love? Oh, does she need? Yes, my daughter. What is it that you need? Anything? Her stuttering. Stuttering. 
Father, we thank you for clarity. We thank, there, there, we thank you for that. We thank you for that. What about you, love? Uh-huh. Father, we thank you for this anointing. It destroys every yoke. And when this cloth is laid upon her sister, that her mind will come clear in Jesus' name. For that anointing drives out the presence of evil spirits that try to trouble her. And I say she's free in her mind in Jesus' name. For that anointing destroys every yoke in Jesus' name. What about you, love? Your ribs, yeah. Father, we thank you for healing in, in Jesus' name. Be whole in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, Father. There it went in. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it. What about for Miss Karen? Your mom. Father, we thank you for that healing anointing. We thank you for that anointing that makes whole. We thank you for that anointing that strengthens, sets everything right. And when it's laid upon our body, we thank you for divine flow in Jesus' name. Amen. Give her my love, would you? Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you. Lift up your voice, lift up your hands. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you. Jesus, it's been such an honor to get to be together these services, these last three days. Father, we don't take it lightly. Heaven records this. And when we get to heaven, we'll watch the replay of all this and the glory and the honor that you receive through this will continue through time, through eternity. And so we're, we're so thankful that we've gotten to be here. We're thankful for one another. Thank you for the company that loves what we love, <laughs> that honors what we honor. We, honor. we love you, we love your word, we love your, your movement in our life. And we're so grateful for the greatness of your plan. We thank you for the revelations we've received the understanding, the wisdom, the answers that have come. We thank you for the power of God, the impartations that have been ministered. And we give you thanks and glory for it in Jesus' name. Pastor Debbie, would you hand me that microphone under your chair, please? Thank you. Pastor Noel, come up here and just obey God. We thank you, Father. <laughs> The coastal aggression, the glory shall be under Kotosun. The glory, Sike, Pokoshite, and the glory will be Kanda Sokopa. Yeah, the glory, the glory, yeah, the glory. No, Mahakoto Soto. Greater glory, greater glory, greater power. Yeah, it's getting better and better. Oh, the glory. The glory, all the glory, all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. The angels in the glory. Yako toko sata. Stepping in, stepping into a better glory, stepping into a stronger glory, stepping in. We're stepping in, we're stepping in. Oka dati yaka toko sete yako to yaka to so yako to so yenta ko toko dite mienta ko posoko te pichene de aroko celebre kaso do bayan endo. Soko telegreshe ke pakoto soto yakoto soto to the light the light the light the light the glory the word the word the word the word of God oh the word oh ha ha the light of the word penetrating the airwave penetrating the airwave penetrating penetrating yeah the truth the truth the truth oh the truth the word the truth the truth of the word the truth of the word yeah the truth of the word yeah 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 the truth of the word is penetrating penetrating the airwave yeah the truth the truth ma the coso and toto and tonight it's flow it's flowing it's flowing oh the coso yeah 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 the airwave of darkness now now the wave the wave the wave of the glory of god the wave the wave oh the coso in the spiritual realm yeah the ghost to keep coso yeah the ghost to now, now, it penetrated. Oh, the prayer, the prayer of the saints, the prayer of the saints of bringing the light, the light, the light, the light, the light, the light, the glory, the glory, because of the word, the word, the word, the word, the truth, the truth, the truth of the word. Oh, the right worship, the right worship, the right worship, the truth, the truth. Oh, ha, ha, spirit.
spirit of truth, worship, spirit of truth, worship, penetrating, 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 is changing. The landscape in the spiritual realm is changing. Oh, yeah, it's time, it's time. The church is rising up. The church is rising up. Because it's time, it's time, it's, it's the hour, it's the hour. The gospel, the truth, the truth, the gospel of truth, the gospel of truth. And the kasoto and the gosukoto and koto soto and the end all will be greater than of the former. I want you to uh, brother Joel and, and Pastor Noel go over and lay hands on the Rainas. Can they do that? Or uh, just go walk over there. Something about the airways. When he started talking about the airways. Go, y'all minister to that couple if you would. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Greater flow in the airways for them. Greater flow in the airways for them. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Worship you, Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just sing a worship, something of thanksgiving or whatever. We give Just one other thing, Pastor Aaron, where are you, love? Come here, come here. As I was standing there, God said, your heart's desire, personally, I don't know, not, this isn't the ministry, whatever your heart's desire. Do you have something that you're, is on the front burner, so to speak, personally, of what you long for? Articulate it because he has something he wants to bring you into in a greater way. And um, it seems to me, I don't, I, I don't know, it'll be a nice surprise for you. A nice surprise. I don't know about y'all, I like surprises. Some people don't like, some people, you know, like they don't want to be surprised. I want to be surprised. 
I, I do. Father, we thank you. We thank you, her heart's desire. Even things, Father, that you desire for her. <laughs> ah, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, we thank you. And Father, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for an enhancement in the office that she occupies and in the flow. We thank you for it. We thank you for it, Father. Utterance, the utterance is so divine. The utterance is so divine. We thank you. She'll go back a different way. She'll go back a different way. Go back a different way. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have you, ha have you been blessed in these three days? Pastor Noel, thank you so much for giving the great big God bless you. <laughs> we were talking today at lunch how fluent we are now in Filipino. <laughs> we are so fluent. We are so fluent. Um, David Ellis, thank you, man, for doing the praise worship sessions and for being here. Thank you. Miss Cindy Black, thank you. Miss Regina, thank you, thank you. Miss Kim, thank you so much. She came all the way from Texas to be with us. And, and then uh, Brother Randy, thank you for being with us. So appreciate it. Brother Jacob, we always love you. We always love it when you show back up. It's, it's, like, it's like seeing family. We love you. Tony, thank you so much. Tony, Tony, Tony. And who is that? OJ? OJ's in there. Thank you, Mr. OJ. Appreciate it. And the rest of the, the, the World Harvest Church music team, the choir, all of the, all the ministry of helps. Thank you so, 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 so much. Hallelujah. And you got to do it again. Come up here, family. My family, all my, bear, do not even roll your eyes at me, brother. Do not. Come up, Morgan, come on up. Uh, Stephen, come up here. And then Grant, these, uh, they all help. He really likes it. He really likes I know. Have you seen these kids on Kids in Faith? Have you seen them? I watched the last one. They were like hosting it themselves. Morgan, they were pretty, they were pretty spectacular. These two like it. Bubby, Bubby's outgrown it, you know, he thinks. And so these two are taking it on. You look like little Ralph Lauren models. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do. <laughs> Aren't they two? These two are buddies. This is one thing you never saw me and my siblings do. And that's get their arm around each other at this age. That just didn't happen. If we did, we were doing this. <laughs> So I love my family. I appreciate all they did. I love that song tonight. David, that song was off the charts, right? That, I got to hear that again, don't y'all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Staff, where are you? Thank you, staff. Raise your hand, staff. They're, they're scattered all throughout. We appreciate it. Pastors, thank you so much for coming and you're leaving your congregations, your own ministries and responsibilities to be with us. Thank you. For other congregation members, our congregation, thank you for being here. For other congregation members like the Mercedes, the, 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 the Keys families, all of them. Uh, thank you for coming and being part of these services. And uh, listen, every time we get together, it's like, well, when are we doing this again? <laughs> right? So you got to show back up. What is the next one? We got Paducah is the next. Then we got camp meeting is after that. So you don't want to miss it. I want to say this. The first time ever we're doing a minister's conference in November. You've seen it advertised. That conference, it runs Tuesday through Thursday, but it's not starting Tuesday night. It's starting Tuesday morning. So you need to arrive on Monday because we don't want, it, when it's only three days, it's like missing services is not a good, a, a, good, a good thing because there's not as many services in those three days. So we want to let you know so that when you make plans, those, that, uh, those ministers that will be attending, make plans to join us starting Tuesday morning. Amen. Well, it's been a good week, right? Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. Just lift up your, your voice to him again. Father, we thank you for your goodness the greatness of your plan. Hallelujah. 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 Turn to somebody before you're dismissed and say, I'm going to keep praying always. And you can be dismissed. God bless you.